Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to our Sunday morning service at the Hedwich Baptist Church. Most will know I've been encouraging the church for quite a while now in their personal prayer life for themselves to pray that the Lord would bless them with wisdom, knowledge, understanding, direction, discernment, and discretion. I'd like to talk a little bit about that today because these things, uh, even though they're all almost synonymous, they're not. They have individual applications in our lives. It's just like when we look at a picture of ourselves or we stand before a mirror, we see all of us. But if we were to gen, just look at one part, maybe an arm or a leg, that's us also. But the leg does something different than the arm does. It's these different functions that we have in our physical bodies. But in our spiritual bodies, the Lord blesses us with himself, you know, and God is love. And that's what Jesus is all about, love. But underneath all those are many, many different applications. We can find them in the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, faith, goodness, temperance, meekness. Father, Lord, we, we desire to walk in the fruit of the spirit, Father. Not, not, not the phony baloney imitation fruit, Father, from the devil, but the real stuff that, that I just quoted, Father, from Philippians, Lord. And so, Lord, loose and perfect that into us, Father. Father, today we want to ask that you would bind those truths, Father, all these different offshoots, Father, these different, the different parts of one fruit, Father, which is Jesus Christ. Father, bind those things to us today, Father, to all of us that are here. And again, Lord, we exercise our faith to all those, Father, that we've included in on our prayers earlier, Father, in Jesus' name. And today, Father, we desire to walk in wisdom, knowledge, understanding, direction, discernment, and discretion. So, Father, we ask that you would bind all of that to our lives right now in Jesus' name. And, Lord, when we get up tomorrow, Lord, help us to remember to pray. Father, this should be in our daily prayers. Lord, remind us, Father, to pray for wisdom, knowledge, understanding, direction, discernment, and discretion. And, Father, as we grow in these things, Lord, we desire to do this not so we can be smarter, not so we can carry on a better conversation or a different conversation with somebody, Father, but so that we can get closer to your son who died for our sins while we were still sinning. Your son went to the cross to die for us so we could make so that so that so that that bridge, that sin that separated us from you, Father, that bridge could be rebuilt. So we can come back to you, Father. All glory, honor, and praise to you today, Father, and to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And Father, so we ask that that wisdom, knowledge, understanding, direction, discernment, and discretion, bind that to our lives today, Father. And Lord, loose and perfect in our lives these truths in Jesus' name. We're going to be starting over in Proverbs chapter 3. Now, we don't have to go far into the book of Proverbs. Uh, actually, chapter one starts dealing with wisdom, and and but in, in chapter three, uh, starting in verse thirteen, these things they're gonna are gonna be mentioned: wisdom, knowledge, understanding, direction, discernment, and discretion. And many times, just as healing, or just as deliverance, will cross the line into healing, and vice versa. These things also. Uh, into our lives. And God knows what we need, when we need it. And so when we need these things, he'll bless us with these things. How, how will we know? Because we'll just go to them. It'll be the only door that's going to open before us when we talk to people about the Lord. It, it's obvious today that there's a lot of smart people out there that have a lot of wisdom, but not a lot of understanding, not a lot of direction or discretion. So to be smart doesn't mean anything. In fact, we know as New Testament believers uh, that God isn't looking for smart people. He's just looking for obedient brothers and sisters, that he doesn't use, you know, the things that are. He uses the things that aren't. He doesn't use uh, those that are smart. He uses those that are base, uh, 
uh, we're told over in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. So that's our goal. Our goal is to go after the things that are going to be our pathway. It's, it's, it's going to be our road or our, our set of roads back to a closer, more dedicated walk with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Happy. It means to be blessed beyond words, very similar to uh, the blessedness uh, that we read about in the Beatitudes. It means to be fully satisfied, to have no more joy in our lives. In this word, happy, in the Hebrew, uh, verse 13 of Proverbs chapter 3, happy is the man that finds, and this word man is not just guys, okay? If you look it up, it's mankind, okay? But both genders. Happy, blessedness is the man, is the person that finds wisdom and the person that gets understanding because the one without the other doesn't work. It might in the world, you might get a great job because you have wisdom in a certain area or you have understanding in a certain area. But in Christianity, we're not talking about the world. We're not talking about a job. We're not talking about other things going on in our lives. We're talking about the things that bring us and help us to get into and have a closer relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And Father, right now, as, as, a, as a group and let me, let me cry, you know, Pastor Will used to say, let me shoot this rabbit as it crosses the path. We are not a deliverance ministry. We are a group of like-minded believers who believe in the casting out of evil spirits. We understand that it's called a deliverance ministry, but there is no ministry of deliverance, just as there is no ministry of healing. God blesses those in their faith. God blesses those. And, and you know that some people's faith is not as strong as others, yet God will use that lower brother or sister in praying for somebody. Why? Because God is sovereign. Because God has a plan that if he shared with us, we'd go and try and help him. He doesn't want our help. He just wants our obedience. So God can use and has used a donkey to get his word out and to do things to change people's lives. And if you're willing to be that donkey, if you're willing to be that, that piece of gold, if you're willing to be that jewel, if you're willing to be that toilet for the Lord to use to bring glory to himself, you are the brother and sister that God is looking for. If you are looking to be nothing and you can do nothing because you are nothing, as the word says, and, and as Jesus says that without him, we can't do anything and that we, we esteem others more highly than we esteem ourselves. You are the brother and sister that God is looking for to pour his power out. If you're looking to be a healer, you'll never get there. Oh, you'll get there with the devil but you won't get there with the Lord. If you're looking to be a deliverer, you won't get there with the Lord. You will get there with the, with the demons, with the devil, and he'll put on deliverance shows all day long. And you say, well, I mean, you know, the devil can't heal. Really? Can he cause sickness? How many verses do you want me to quote from? Of course he can cause sickness. And if he can cause sickness, and it's through demons, a spirit of infirmity, can he not take it away? And if he takes it away, does not healing come to the body? Sure it does. We're, 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 um, we're confused. We are, we are taught that there are different ministries and different anointings that are out there. Brothers and sisters, there's one anointing, and that's the Holy Spirit in our life. And if we will allow the Holy Spirit to work in our lives, and, and not think of ourselves as being something, not to think of ourselves as being a deliverer, not to think of ourselves as being a healer, not to think of ourselves as, as, oh, I can talk about the Lord all day long. If we'll not think about those things, the Lord will use us in many, many ways. But we must be careful that the second our pride, the second we come in front of what the Holy Spirit, which is Jesus Christ living on the inside of us, the second, the millisecond, that we come before that, the Holy Spirit and the power of God 
steps aside and it doesn't leave us. It just steps aside and says, I'll wait for you. And, and that the Holy Spirit will wait until the day we die. And that doesn't mean we're going to change. That's up to us. We have volition to make these choices in our lives. And if we choose today to walk in wisdom, knowledge, understanding, direction, discernment, and discretion, God will bless us with those things, and he'll show us when to shut up. He'll show us when to talk. He'll show us when to step back. He'll show us when to step forward. He'll show us when we need to take the lower seat, which is 99% of the time. He'll show us the truth of his word because when, when we walk before the Lord and we get into a situation, the only door in front of us to go through is the right one. There aren't a bunch of doors to choose from. It'll be something because we're desiring to not have our name out there. We're desiring to not have anybody know who we are. We're desiring to be a nothing, nobody from nowhere. We're desiring to be a base thing, to confound the things that say they're mighty. If we're willing to do that, you and I, brothers and sisters, us, we're the ones that God is looking for. And he'll use, he'll put his power through us to heal. He'll put his power through us to deliver. He'll put his power through us to give a word of wisdom. I, I Sorry, I'm cringing using that term because the charismaniacs have, have just ruined it. Okay, There are words of wisdom. It's just us talking to somebody. And, and you know, we, we don't get rockets, red glare, bombs bursting in the air. You know, our halo doesn't get straightened on our head, you know, spiritually speaking. Or, oh, I can now speak for the Lord. God uses you and me. He uses us just the way we are in all of our filth, in all of our unrighteousness, in all of the dirt that is before our lives. But if we're seeking to serve Jesus Christ, if we want Jesus Christ to be first in our lives, God is for us. But if it's us and Jesus, if, if, if you know, you see that bumper sticker, I, I laugh now. In fact, I actually drive either far behind that vehicle or I get way in front of that vehicle that says, God is my co-pilot. Listen, if God isn't the pilot of our vehicle, you don't want him as a co-pilot because it's not us and him, it's him. It's not us and Jesus, it's Jesus. And that's it. And if Jesus uses us, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? If God's going to use us, we should be like Peter. When Jesus stepped on his boat and Peter said, get away from me. I'm a sinful person. I, I, why, are, why would you have anything to do with me? And we humble ourselves. And this humility is real. It's true. It's not something we put on as a garment. Oh, because I do this, that, and the other thing. God uses me. Baloney. Anywhere you slice that. Blessedness. Happy is the man. You want to be fully satisfied today? Be fully satisfied today is the person that findeth wisdom and the person that gets understanding with that wisdom. Verse 14. For the merchandise of it, the gain in the Hebrew, the gain of it is better than the gain of silver and the gain thereof of the best gold, the 99.999999% gold that is out there. And if we could just be honest with ourselves for a second, somebody were to come up to us and say, hey, I got this deal. I got this 99.99999% piece of gold for you at half price. Not even at full price, but at half price. What would you give or what would you give me for it? How many people would sell their souls to get that? But it says that wisdom and understanding in our lives as Christians is better than the merchandise, the gain that we would get from silver. There's nothing wrong with having silver, as long as we have Jesus before that. And, and the gain thereof of fine gold. You know, a lot of people, they wear things today. Now, I'm not aware of things. I wear a wedding ring because I'm married, 
And because my wife wants me to wear a wedding ring. If my wife didn't want me to wear a wedding, wedding ring, I wouldn't wear one. Doesn't show, you, you know, I mean, why? It shows that we're married. Do you know there's people out there that that they go after married people they, they don't they don't want somebody you know that uh, that isn't married they, they want to defile somebody that is married so it's just an advertisement i wear a wedding ring because my wife would like me to wear one so i do in fact i try i try to never take it off because when i do i misplace it and blah 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 uh, so i try and wear it as often uh, as i can and but there are other people and there's nothing wrong Hear me, okay? There's nothing wrong with things that are proper for us to have in our lives. And they can be made of gold. They can be made of some, you know, some jewel uh, that's out there. It's okay. As long as if we had to run, okay, just, just like Lot's Lot, just like Lot's wife, say that fast three times, huh? I couldn't say it fast one time. And and she couldn't she couldn't go forward in the things, the help, the deliverance, the freedom, which she was going to need very very soon, because God was going to destroy. And she couldn't go forward without looking back at those things that had her bigger than the Lord had her. That's up to us. That's a decision. And, and that decision comes wrapped up in the wisdom, knowledge, understanding, direction, discernment, and discretion that we are asking the Lord to bless us with today in our lives, brothers and sisters. Because that tells us everything we need to know about the next step we're going to take. Oh, but this brother's doing this and this sister's doing this. So what? Praise God, whatever they're doing. Sufficient unto our day today, in the Beatitudes, sufficient unto our day is the evil that you and I have to deal with in our lives, period. Now, we can be reaching out to other people, praise the Lord. But first, we need to make sure that these clogs and, and potholes and, and these things that the devil's putting before us to distract us or, or to you know put these veils, these, these little things in front of us, we need to make sure that they're not in the way of us seeing and discerning what the Lord is doing in our lives. This is why, why should the Lord give us wisdom, knowledge, understanding, direction, discernment, discretion? First off, number one, if we don't use it. Number two, well, I mean, that ties in, I guess, number two ties in with number one in my point, which is if we're not going to use it, then why would the Lord bless us with it? Lord, give me wisdom. See, we want, we want wisdom immediately for something that maybe the Lord says, no, you know what, I need you to see something else here, so I'm not going to give you the wisdom you're looking for. Will that be okay? See, is it okay for God? I guess, brothers and sisters, it really comes down to, everything comes down to the sovereignty of God. Will we, can we, will we allow the Lord to be God? And to know that he cares for us, that when we pray for something that we think we need, God may say, yeah, but you need this other more. And we don't even know it. So what would we want? Would we want what we want? Or would we want what the Lord wants? Now, none of us want to go through a hard time. None of us want to go through tribulations, but count it all joy, it says, when we go through these things. Sometimes, brothers and sisters, and I could make a joke of it, but I'm not going to. This is serious. Sometimes tribulations are our friend because they fine tune us. They, they keep us close to the Lord because there isn't any other answer out there except Jesus Christ in our life. That's why it's so important. Because when we have wisdom, knowledge, understanding, direction, discernment, and discretion in our lives, it helps us to sit back and our faith starts inching in front of us. It starts to get bigger and bigger. Why does it get bigger? Because it starts it starts to get in the forefront of our thoughts. The prize of the high calling is Jesus Christ. Committing, you know, the word of God encourages it. It says, commit our souls unto 
unto our Savior because he is a faithful creator. Commit the way we think, the way we feel, the way we act, and the way we react. And my heart's desire is for Costas to be healed. But until that time, can Costas be who the Lord wants him to be? I know he's trying. Praise the Lord. How about, how about us? How about these, these idiosyncrasies that we, too, have in our lives? Anybody go through? Anybody been bummed recently? Yeah, my hand went up. If you don't have your camera on, you know, anybody been fighting off bad thoughts because of other things going on in their lives? No, my hand went up again. You know, anybody struggling with trying to make it from morning to noon to night? Sometimes, well, there's my hand again. I'm no different than anybody else. We are no different than anybody else. But can we stand in front of that? And there's that problem. We go, wow, Lord. Because most of my problems, the Lord says, Michael, you're the problem today. You need to work on this. I'm showing you this, and you're not doing anything. You can tell me all day long about how you love me and how you feel about me, but you're not doing what I'm asking you to do. Humna, 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 humna. See, we need to take care of us. And that's the most important thing. How's Jesus in your life today, brothers and sisters? Now, you can be like me and lie. That's right. You probably all heard me tell the story before. Very good friend of mine, good friend of all of ours, a person that I love, deeply respect, because he, he's one of the closer things to a, a real Christian than the one I look at when I, when I look in the mirror sometimes. And he came into my life, put his arms around me, says, how's Jesus in your life? And I lied to him because I was having a real hard time. And I said, fine, everything's good. And I walked away just so convicted because I lied because Jesus wasn't fine in my life. But that, see, that just worked out for my betterment. So that was, a, that was a tough thing that I had to go through. But I look back, and I'm so grateful to the Lord that he didn't just kill me dead right there. Yeah, Jesus is fine in my life. <laughs> you know, and that bolt of lightning comes down and makes me into a crispy critter. Blessed happiness. Happy is the person that finds wisdom and the person that gets understanding because the gain of that wisdom and that understanding is better than gold, better than silver. She, and again, you know, ladies, you just by being a lady, okay, it doesn't matter what you look like. And I mean that respectfully, okay? You know, now if you... If you make yourself ugly, I'm talking about how God created you, okay? If you made yourself ugly, that's between you and the Lord. You know, just like the same thing with guys. But ladies are looked at as being beautiful. They have, they have an inward beauty that guys don't even think about it, okay? And, and, and when it comes out, Let's face it, guys, you know, when that inward beauty comes out, you're just like, wow. Because it, it's just, well, it's nothing. We, 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 couldn't, we couldn't pay God to have that uh, in our lives, so to speak. And, and, the, and even the outward beauty. I mean, however that all works out or, 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 how, or how a proper lady uh, dresses herself. You know, you just look. And there's just something different. There's, there's a holiness there. There's just something that guys can look at and, and, and not see anything because, because that lady, that female, is not trying to show a certain part of their body, not trying to get somebody to look at something different. They're just beautiful because they've tried to make themselves beautiful. It's a she that's it, encompassed in the word she, not he. Uh, he is a little bit different. You know, that's why the Ray McKillop message that he gave many years ago in the church, we still have it, uh, of uh, title of it was Husbands, Wives, and Demons. And he gave the example that uh, men are like that old bucket. And uh, he has a little farm 
Ray does. And he's got this bucket, obviously, that, you know, he fills this, that, and the other thing. It's got slop in it. It's got whatever, and then he's got whatever and that. And, yeah, when he's done, he just throws it off to the side. And and that was more of a description, you know, of men. And guys, we can laugh, but inside we know. But when he came to talk about the ladies, he talked to them as being a vase or a vase that needs to be that is that is very um, uh, that is very fragile. Not 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 that is very fragile, and that is put up on a pedestal and protected, and made sure that it's up there doing what it's supposed to do: hold things of beauty. You know, hold things that that are going to be shown or whatever. But the ugly things belong to the guys. Am I going on too much? Verse 15. Speaking of wisdom and understanding, she is more precious than rubies. And you ladies, you cover yourself with things to try and make yourself more beautiful. Why don't you just be beautiful like you are? She is more precious than rubies and all the things that could be desired are not to be compared unto wisdom and understanding. Because if we don't have understanding with our wisdom, we are nothing. We just toot our own horns and we let people know about how great we are and what we do and how God has been working in our lives and thank God that God has us in his life because what would God be able to do without us uh, in, our, in, in his life? And so when we have wisdom and understanding, that's better to have than rubies or anything that, could, that would be desired can't be compared to wisdom and understanding. Length of days is in her right hand, the hand of authority, length of days. Now, there's not anybody, unless you have a debilitating sickness, unless your soul is, is compromised to a point where you don't want to live anymore. Nobody, nobody in there I'm going to use the term right mind. I don't hope I don't offend anybody, but there's not one person in their right mind says, Hey, I want to die at an early age. Well, I, I want to live to 20 and then that's it, man. I'm done. We fight for life. That's why Jesus came to give us life and give it more abundantly. Yes. He gave us eternal life with him, but here on earth, he came to give us life to enjoy. I listen. It's a very dark world out there. We know that. And, and the politicians, they're all evil, you know, and 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 the laws, they're they're not they're not righteously, faithfully being being doled out. You know, we're being we're being dealt from the bottom of the deck. But that only needs to bother us if we allow it. Other than that, we can go outside and look and see the beauty of God. Look, look up in the heavens and see. What's it say in um, uh, Psalm ninety-eight? Uh, no, no, no. And it, it's it says to look at God in His firmament, you know, in everything that He created. We just to just get blown away in the beauty of the things that God created. It says the length of days is in her hand. It's up to us having wisdom and understanding. And in her left hand, riches and honor. Is there anybody here that doesn't want length of days or riches or honor? Now, sometimes, brothers and sisters, because I know a lot of people, yeah, man, I need to win that lottery because I got this, that, I got myself in debt here. Bah! That's right. You got yourself in debt there because you did something that God can't bless. So God's like, you take care of that and I'll take care of this other stuff. Or in his sovereignty, God can do whatever he wants. He can, he can deal you, he can get you out of your debt. He did me. And uh, you know, my credit card now, I don't buy it if I can't pay for it at the end of the month. I, my, my credit score used to be 
Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's now over 800. It used to be embarrassing. I mean, like, if I told people, they'd be like, oh, they even trust you with a card? But in her length of days, to have God's wisdom, knowledge, understanding, direction, discernment, and discretion in our lives. Because under this wisdom comes these other things. But they're not the same. But if we get God's wisdom and we get understanding with God's wisdom, direction, discernment, discretion, all that stuff, it, it comes. It, it, it just, it's part and parcel. One touches the other one and it lights up, goes, yep, I'm here too. So in left hand, our riches and honor, verse 17, her ways, you know, you know what this means, ways? Here's direction. So here's wisdom, knowledge. I'm, here's wisdom and understanding. And here's direction. Because wisdom with understanding in our lives are the ways of pleasantness. Does anybody? Now, listen, if, if you're gifted by the devil with being a curmudgeon, if you're gifted by the devil with being a Corella DeVille or, or a nurse ratchet, <clears throat> Okay, change yourself. And don't don't tell me that you grew up in a certain area and this is the way you are. Don't tell me this is what my people do in my culture. <clears throat> Old things have passed away. Behold, everything becomes new. You became a Christian. Not a Christian and what I used to be. You became a Christian. Stop it. And it's up to you. It's not up to the person praying deliverance for you. It's up to you to quit being a curmudgeon. It's up to you to quit being a down and out or oh, yeah. well, I'm just all bad all the time. Really? Well, you yeah. woohoo, you're so fun to be with. That's not what the Lord wants for us. We're to be up and outers, not down and outers. He'll bless us in our obedience. And we have different temperaments. There are some people that are slower than others, but that does, you know, God doesn't want Eeyores out there. You know, Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh. Winnie the Pooh. Tubby little cub. Moving on. Uh, let's see. Her ways, her the directions of this wisdom, knowledge, understanding, direction, discernment, discretion. Her ways are the ways of pleasantness. And all of her paths are peace. Or we kill to get peace, don't we? We maim. We, 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 we steal. We do so much evil to get peace. Really? What if we just try and get it from Jesus, since he's the prince of peace, since he's the author of peace? If we get it from Jesus, then we don't have to dip into the toilet to grab stuff out of there. Her ways, the directions, are the directions to plenty, pleasantness, to be pleasant. So when you come around, people are, oh, I'm so happy to see you. And they're not lying. How many of us are, are, and listen, this is why we need to stop, brothers and sisters, because there are some people that force us to lie. Oh, it's good to see you today. And then your hearts are just like, man, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. You just, if you've not, I know you have been. I'm not even going to go down that, that road. Yes, you have. You know what I'm talking about. So this wisdom, knowledge, understanding, direction, discernment, and discretion is a tree of life to those that want it, to those that lay hold upon her. Does wisdom, knowledge, understanding, direction, discernment, and discretion, does it mean that much to us? It should, because it's a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her and happy, fully satisfied, is every single person that retains her. So we can have it today. And when we ask the Lord to give it to us, he then builds it in our lives. But when we get up tomorrow in our daily prayer, let's ask the Lord for it again, because he'll bless us through the day. And, and yeah, it, it'll, it'll, over, it'll overflow into other things in other days. 
but we're going, we're on that road. We're on that road to pleasantness. We're on that road to peace. We're, we're on that road to length of days. We're, you know, we're on the road to all these other things that the word of God is talking about, to, to having, having spiritual silver and spiritual gold in our hands, but better. The merchandise of it. This wisdom, knowledge, understanding, direction, discernment, and discretion is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her. And happy is everyone that retains her. Verse 19 of Proverbs 3. The Lord, by wisdom, has founded the earth. By understanding, he has established the heavens. Again, do you know that we can think on this verse alone until the day we come back? And the Lord will he'll 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 open up truths to this as we look out. We had just such a neat conversation uh, in the kitchen at HBC uh, with, at the birthday party, just talking about things of the Lord and and other people's views and opinions, you know. Uh, uh, and they were all true. I mean, they were all they all came from different directions in the same topic. Yeah, I'm I'm standing off to the side. Well, we're we're all whatever side we were on, and and I gave an opinion. Somebody else gave their opinion. I'm sitting there going, "Yeah, that's it. That's it. You know, like that's better than better than my opinion towards that." And it's just as equal. It's just as it's just as cool. Because when we want the things of the Lord, He blesses those. What father? What what son? What daughter? would go to their mom or dad and say, I need something to eat. Here, have a stone. Well, what do you mean have a stone? What, what mom and dad would do that? Oh, yeah, a sadistic one, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about on, on, a, on a normal day, what mom and dad? When your children come to you and say, I'm hungry, what do you do? You stop what you're doing. Let's see what we have. I do that with my nephews now. You guys said, yeah, I'll, it, it, world stops. It freezes right there. Let's see what, what we can do to bring that into your life. That's what the Lord does. The Lord, by wisdom, has, has founded the earth. By understanding, he has established the heavens. By his knowledge, wisdom, knowledge, understanding. All these things are mentioned here. Direction is mentioned here in her ways. Wisdom, knowledge, understanding, direction. There's discernment and discretion, which is all involved in this. And many, many other verses, which I obviously will not have time to get into all of these. Thank you, Lord. So by his knowledge, the depths, depths are broken up and the clouds drop down with dew. Now, even though this is part of wisdom, it's not. It has a separate issue of an understanding that God wants us to have about why these things happen. It's the same thing in our lives. God, you know, God loves us because he's love. Way amen to that. But now we start breaking this down. Why does he love us? Well, because what manner of love? As our father bestowed upon us that we should be called his children. Well, we're now we're, we're now we're his children. Well, he wants his children to come unto him. He wants to provide and he wants us to come as children, not as a 12-year-old. I'll tell you what to do. He wants us to come as a two, three, four, five-year-old and look up to that parent, to that father, and say, hey, you know, and, and then want to be so many children. I'm putting aside the 10%. So many children, they look at their parents. That's their God. That, that's everything. Everything comes from that parent. Well, it's the same thing with us. Everything that we need comes from our father. Not some other father. Not the father of lies. Okay, not, not the father of, of grabbing this because later on in life you'll be better. No, give us this day our daily bread. Lord, what is it that you have for us today? Lord, help me, help me to, to feast on every crumb. For my, help me not to not leave one crumb of my daily bread. And Lord, 
let it get into all, all that spiritual nutrition that I'm going to get from it. Let it get into all those places that need it. So he says, by his knowledge, the depths are broken up and the clouds drop down the dew. My son, my child, let not them depart from your eyes. Keep sound, keep sound wisdom and what? Discretion, wisdom, knowledge, understanding, direction. Discretion. There's only one thing left here is discernment. And it's all here anyway, because we're asking for discernment with these things. See, by God's knowledge, the depths are broken up and the clouds drop down the dew. Because you know what discretion gives us? I love, I love discretion because if any if any one of these offshoots of this wonderful fruit, this wonderful Jesus Christ that, that we love and serve today. I needed discretion. I needed to know when to shut up, when it was okay to talk. I needed to know when I could go forward. Why? Because I was a pompous, you know what? Because I was a long hair. Do you think you had hair? <laughs> I was just I was just a punk. I had my own life. All of us did. I know I'm preaching to the choir here. We all had the same thing. We all had this bad life where we or self-made people in whatever crime or whatever we were doing in our lives. But now our life is not ours anymore. We are dead and our life is now hid with Christ in God because Jesus is now our life. So it's not about us anymore. It's all about what Jesus wants. And he's looking for men and women, boys and girls, who will give themselves over and say, okay, Jesus, here I am. What do you have? What do you want me to do? I can't do anything unless, unless you gift me with doing it. I won't do anything of my own. Lord Jesus, you came to do your father's will, but you were the son of God. You could have done anything you wanted. Yes, but he lowered himself. He made himself into the fashion of a man. And then he endured all things including the death of the cross, even though he was the creator. I know. You know, the brain just short circuits on that. Oh, we sit back and go, wow. Ooh, thank you, Lord. But to understand that. So here, just, just in these verses here, we've got everything being mentioned of why we need wisdom, knowledge, understanding, direction, discernment, and discretion. Oh, and by the way, as I was working with this message, if you want to add other things on to wisdom, knowledge, understanding, direction, discernment, and discretion, you go right ahead. I mean, please, Anna, you can have a whole laundry list of other things that you'd like to have in your life. But make sure these six things you're going after first. Let them not depart from our eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. Discretion is knowing what? How to have these things in our life. Wow. Is it that important? Well, it's got to be. Or discretion and, and understanding and direction, they wouldn't be mentioned. You know, it is all part of one, but within that one, the Lord wants us to go inside that. The Lord wants us to. Almost be belligerent, respectfully. Say, so how does that happen? Only in the Lord. Where we just move aside all the things so we can get to where the Lord wants us. And he wants to teach us. He wants to, that's why, you know, in deliverance in the Old Testament, when God was delivering his people, he said, little by little, he said, I'm going to give them enough land for them to hold. I'm going to test them. See if they can hold the land. If they hold the land, then I'm going to give a little bit more. And I'm going to test them. And I'm going to give them a little bit more. I'm going to test them. I'm going to give them a little bit more until the beasts of the field perish. Until they, they, you know, their feet are enlarged under them and they can occupy that land. See, we have all being born again. And we'll never get the all until we die and see Jesus as he is. That's what and the scripture teaches. But until that time, 
we can have more and more, more about Jesus. That's what it's all about, more about Jesus. My son, don't let these things, my children, don't let these things depart from your eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. So shall thy be life. So shall they, excuse me. So shall they be life unto the way we think, the way we feel, the way we act, the way we react. Who we are as a, as a person, for whatever reason, when we became born again, God did not deliver us from the flesh. Now, our new life, we're dead. Our new life, it was the spirit that got born again, and it's sealed now. You don't have to, it's separated. You know, we're, we're, we're set apart. We're going to heaven, okay? But now we're told to work out our salvation because we're supposed to be the light and life of Jesus Christ. And if we care about our salvation, if we care about Jesus, if we care about that Jesus died while we were while we were still sinning, while he while he was walking past us, we looked at him, spit on him and kicked him and laughed at him and, and mocked him. I did. Not, not not purposely, just not knowing because because I was ignorant. When you looked up ignorant in the dictionary, there I was. It was my mug there. Hopefully it's not there anymore. But for all of us, you know, Jesus went to the cross. He looked, as the song says, I love the Florida boys on that uh, Gaither homecoming singing. When I was on the cross, we, you and I, we were on his mind. He was looking ahead in time, as the song says. If you've not heard that song lately, type it in, Gaither homecoming. Uh, Florida boys or Gaither homecoming when I was on the cross. One of the best renditions you'll ever hear. Pastor Will heard that song. We played it over and over and over again when he was in the hospital. He loved, just tears rolling down his eyes. He loved that song. In fact, first time he heard it, he looked at Joy and he, he says, honey, he says, I've got to have that song. So, we went out and found it for him. My son, let not them depart from thine eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. Why? So shall they be life unto our soul and grace unto our neck. Then shall we walk in the way safely, and our foot shall not stumble. When we lay down, we won't be afraid. Now, not everybody has this problem specifically, but there are a lot of people have, have problems with dreams. I, I, mean, I can have a bad dream you know, with the next person, but I know there are a lot of people that have bad dreams. And if you do, let's go before the Lord in deliverance, in healing. And, and trust the Lord and say, Father, in your word, it says that when, when I'm after wisdom, knowledge, understanding, direction, discernment, discretion. See, now, if you don't care about these things, then I, I wouldn't expect, you can expect to go to heaven. Praise the Lord. And you'll be peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. Praise the Lord. But God has a lot more going on that he doesn't even hint to us. That he has for us. We really shouldn't even take the time to think about those things. We can't help sometimes, but because eye has not seen, eye has never seen, never, ever, ever, ever has it ever, ever, ever entered into our hearts the things that God has for us, ever. The things we think of that were like, wow, what is, is nothing. How can that be? <laughs> I mean, what does he have for? What's going on? Well, life is going on. Life is so precious. Life is so important. Have you ever hurt? Have you ever had issues that you just have to cry over? Do you ever feel like just a lump of nothing? And Well, we all do. And our Heavenly Father cares about these things in our life. He doesn't want us to be like that. The devil does. 
The devil wants you to hurt. See, Satan and those demons want you to suffer. They want you to be worried all the time. They want you to agonize everything going on. They want you to just be beside yourself with, with confusion. And, and he, they want your soul and, and your spirit to hurt so bad that you just want to die because things are just so bad. But they don't want you to die yet. They want you to hurt even more. That's how much these things hate you. They hate everything about you. They hate your children. They hate your job. They hate your finances. They hate your relationships, your good relationships. What they hate. And that's where they work, brothers and sisters. And the only person that can change that, I mean, obviously, is Jesus Christ. But the only person that's in charge to change that is you and me. That's up to us. We can walk in the way safely. Anybody want to walk in the way safely? Pray. Brothers and sisters, listen. This wisdom, knowledge, understanding, direction, discernment, discernment, and discretion is so, so, so important for all of us. Because even when it's raining, we can be dry. Even when it's bad. Listen, I'm nothing. I'm nowhere. I'm not anywhere of where the Lord wants me to be. But the microcosm of wisdom, knowledge, understanding, direction, discernment, discretion. I speak the truth in Christ and I lie not. I, 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 I'm, I'm at the end of the line. I'm the worst of the worst of Christians. But because of this microcosm of wisdom, knowledge, understanding, direction, discernment, discretion, I'm not what I used to be. And, and the Lord's taken me through times recently that I would fall apart from before. But just because I need to have a closer walk with Jesus, the, and I went after that ever, ever so meagerly as I did. Is that a word, meagerly? It is today. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a neogist. These are neogisms. And uh, you can look up the word. It has nothing to do with, uh, I'm, I'm prophesying neologies right now. Let's get back to the word here. We shall walk in safety and our foot not stumble. When we lie down, we don't have to be afraid. Yea, when we sleep. I, I've been praying. You might have heard me in, the, in church or in the room and have sweet sleep tonight in Jesus' name. Ask the Lord. Be not afraid of sudden fear. Oh, I gotcha. You ever, see, you ever see these ridiculous things on? They say, look at this picture, and you're looking all of a sudden this. In an instant, this ugly face, probably us manifesting, and uh, comes up, people's sudden fear. This is be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it comes. You know, so much more here. Do you know, uh, did we cover with discretion? Uh, remember in Proverbs 30 and 3 verses 21, you know, don't let them depart from our eyes, but keep sound wisdom and discretion. Do you know that Proverbs 22, verses 1 through 6 says, A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches, and loving favor rather than silver or gold. The rich and the poor meet together with the Lord because he's the maker of them all. Some people have it, some people don't. You say, why? They'll talk to the Lord about that. A prudent man foresees evil. What does he do? He discerns it. The prudent man discerns the evil and then hides himself. But those who don't have wisdom, knowledge, understanding, direction, discernment, discretion in their life, they pass on and they're punished. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. See, in order, and what is, the, what is the beginning of the fear of the Lord? It's wisdom, the beginning of the fear of the Lord. Now, that's one's in, one's in Job, the other one's in Psalm. The, the, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Both these words. 
are used. One in Psalm, one in, one in Job, I believe it is. It says, by humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. Anybody want that? Thorns and snares are in the way of the forward. He that doth keep his soul shall be far from them. Listen, what shall it profit us if we gain the whole world and lose our own soul? What shall we give in exchange for our soul? There's so much more here. Real quick, we'll, we'll close with, uh, let's, let's jump way back into Proverbs. We'll, we'll go to the chapter before, chapter three, chapter two. It says, when wisdom, now remember, if we're going after wisdom, knowledge, understanding, direction, discernment, discretion, okay, that's the whole ball of wax. That's the, that wisdom, okay? These other things make the wisdom work, so to speak. And of course, to have wisdom, you know, we've got to have the fear of the Lord in our lives. In order to have the fear of the Lord in our lives, we've got to have Jesus because the lost don't have any fear of the Lord, but Christians do. And in order to have the fear of the Lord, we've got to have, we've got to go after this wisdom or knowledge. Job and, and the psalmist says, but it says when wisdom, verse, uh, verse 10, chapter 2, when wisdom enters into our heart and knowledge is pleasant unto our soul, because you know what knowledge does? Knowledge tells the wisdom, see, wisdom is trying to tell us to shut up and sit down. Wisdom is trying to tell us we're talking too much. Wisdom is trying to tell us that we're too proud, for we're too big for our shoes. You know, wisdom is trying to tell us all these things about us. And how does it do it? It does it with knowledge. Now, this word knowledge, epinosis. It means it's a per, it's a perfect, it's it's a perfect knowledge. It's a perfect understanding. It, it meant much of that comes through experiential knowledge, because in, now God can just bless us. This is in His sovereignty. God can just say, "Hey, your brain is this big, Michael, and your head is this big." But what's going on is is that you're all bone. That whole thing, your whole cranium is bone, except for this little area for your brain. He says, you're never going to get it. So I'm going to gift it to you. Now, he does that with a lot of us. But when he does, he gives us, because we can't get it any other way. But there are other ways that come by experience. We go through an experience, and we can buck up to the Lord and say, well, I shouldn't have this. I don't know why you don't like me. You bless this person. You do this with this person over here. Or we just roll with it and say, wow, Lord, do I need to do something else in my life, Lord? I, Lord, I keep getting this reoccurrence of problem in my life, and could it be me? And, and listen, brothers and sisters, please listen. These witches that are out there, these witch wannabes or whatever, the only reason they work is because we buy into it. They say they got power, we become afraid. We've got, behold, Luke 10, 19, behold. I give you exousia power, authority over serpents and scorpions and over all the power that, bam, the dynamite of the world and nothing shall by any hurt you. But the witches are after me. Just tell them to shut up and sit down. Get thee behind me right now in Jesus' name. Brothers and sisters, we have the authority. You say, I'm doing that, but it's not working. Then ask God. It's not demons. It's you. You, you, you have bought in that the devil is, man, we have, we have authority over these things. Unless we give our authority, unless our wills were taken captive by Satan at his will, we're told in the word of God. Why, why can we be taken captive by Satan at his will? Well, because our wills line up with him. Listen, God's an economist when it comes to blessings. God's an economist when it comes to power. Okay, again, binding and loosing. You know, you don't give a 12 year old authority to drive a car. Well, God doesn't do that either with us. If we don't care, if, if we're so, if we're so listening to the devil and these demons all the time, what about the Holy Spirit? Gee whiz, what about the Holy Spirit? 
We every these devils, they never shut up. That's why I just tell them to shut up and sit down. Get thee behind me right now in Jesus' name. I don't want to hear from you. Shut. You know, when I'm praying for for people, I some of you out there, and that's between you and the Lord, you love talking to demons. I loathe talking to demons. Shut up. Get out right now in Jesus' name. And they just start talking again. Now, I used to talk to them. Boy, they'd get me distracted, laughing so hard. But they're so, they're, I mean, you want a true comedian, you'll find out where these comedians get a lot of their work from. And they have us all, I mean, I've seen six of us be rolling in laughter because we got deceived. I, I do everything I can now. I don't have time for them. Shut up, sit down, and come out in Jesus' name. That, that's all they, they don't want to hear the name of Jesus. Tell them to get behind you in Jesus' name. Now, I'm not saying you don't have demons who's ever out there that has, that has demons. I'm just saying that you have authority over these things. <clears throat> I think I'm done. Stop. It says stop. i got to stop. <clears throat> okay. Wisdom enters into the heart. Knowledge is pleasant to your soul. Discretion shall preserve you. Understanding shall keep you to deliver you. From the way it gives you direction, wisdom, knowledge, understanding, direction, discernment, discretion. It's all mentioned here. The Lord has an answer for all. There's a lot more, but so if you're here this morning, not knowing, if you're here today, excuse me, not knowing this Jesus that I'm talking about, make sure you know him. Ask him to come into your life and save you from your sins. And when he does, he's going to come in, he's going to come in with authority. Okay. And those demons are going to run every place. They're going to hide in all the shadow because that light and life of Jesus Christ is going to be shining on the inside. And all those areas that are not surrendered to Jesus, those are the dark areas. Those are the pillars of, dar of garbage. World. And they hide behind those things. They have to. They have to hide in the darkness. They can't be in the light. More of Jesus, less of the devil. More of Jesus, less of the demons. More, more of the word of God, less of Satan's word in our lives. More of godly, godly, godly Christian music, not that swill that's being passed off as Christian music today. The, the, the hymns, the, the beautiful things that are out there, the beautiful songs. That other music doesn't stand a chance. So make sure you ask this Jesus to come in your life and save you from your sins. And if you'll do that, he'll do that. He'll come in, he'll save you, but he'll save you from the inside out. Your Christianity doesn't have to be a garment that you put on. Look at me, I'm a Christian. You just be who you are. Because that's who God saved, by the way. He didn't save you to be like somebody else. Quit looking at other people. Look at yourself. That's who he saved. He loves you so much that he sent his son to the cross to die for you. So make sure you make him. It's great to make him Savior, but then we have to do what we can to make him Lord. So make sure you ask him to come in your life and save you from your sins. But if you're driven, harassed, and tormented, and this is producing a compulsive behavior in your life, slow down, stopping, or turn around your spiritual growth and progress, this is what demons are doing in the life of the believer. Demons aren't after the world, okay? You can't get another demon or an unsaved person with a crowbar, as I often say. The demons are after you and the things that are close to your heart from Jesus Christ. Jesus said, these signs shall follow them that believe. That's what we do, we believe. In his name, they shall cast out devils. It also says, they shall lay hands on the sick for them to recover. Father, Lord, we believe, Lord, because we've had experience, epinosis. We've got this perfect knowledge of deliverance. Father, I don't think we all have, I don't, a perfect knowledge of healing. Lord, help us to exercise our faith and pray for healing, Father, for anybody that's also seeking healing. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Uh, God spreads his table full. It's a smorgasbord for all of us to come and feast from. So I love y'all. I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, shut off the recording and Hagrid's turn it over to you uh, for anybody that wants prayer there in the building.